When I made the switch to Linux, finding the perfect video editor for me was one of the big question marks. So far, I've narrowed that down to two systems that I've been using on a daily basis. One is Lightworks and the other is Caden Live. Eventually, I will be using Resolve as well on this channel, but we'll talk about that more later. But no matter what system I'm using, I need and want a smooth editing experience, meaning I want playback at the full frame rate at which I shot the video at. I want to uh, be able to look through clips in my bin really quickly and play them back without having to worry or wait for them to load. To me, these are very, very uh, simple but important things for the editing system to do. For a bit when I was working with Caden Live, I was a little discouraged because I felt like either, whether it was maybe my system being underpowered or me having the settings wrong or just the nature of Caden Live, I wasn't getting a smooth playback experience. So I've narrowed down three really important things for you to look out for, to check out, to experiment with in order to get a smooth editing experience in Caden Live. So I'm gonna jump right into this project. This is a makeshift project, a temporary project for me just to demonstrate a couple things. These are clips that I shot for the last video I posted. I'm just using as examples. So these clips were shot on a Fujifilm X-H1, shot at UHD 4K. I'll show you the settings that I have this project set out right now. So this project is set at UHD 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 at 29.97 frames per second. I have played around with different settings on here, but right now this is the this is the uh, resolution frame rate that I'm working mostly with on this channel. So my project is set at that, UHD 4K 29.97. If I use these clips in, in Lightworks, they play like butter. So I knew that I could, I was confident I could get a similar playback experience in Caden Live. So first I'll show you the laggy playback in the timeline that I try to avoid when editing. It really makes it difficult to um, to work, you know, to build a complex story when you have a lot of clips and you're building a long project and whatever you need you need to, to be able to move quickly. So I just threw this one clip in the timeline. I'm gonna hit play and show you the frame rate. Now the frame rate in Caden Live, you can you can watch your frame rate playback on the screen by enabling that on the monitor overlay. You can say monitor overlay playback frames per second and that's what I have turned on. Now if I hit play a wedding photographer or something like that where and let it catch up and see it's running event, between one, 7 to 10 frames uh, per second one project um, might have its own with nothing else going on in the timeline. It. Just one I clip, no color correction, no effects. The timeline is set to the exact over many, many years. Uh, resolution and frame rate that my clip is set at. So this was my day, first experience with Caden Lie was this kind of so thing, and so I was so I've um, a lot of folders, uh, a lot scratching of my head on why that was. And now I'll talk about pre changing preview resolution later. But and for to me, this should play, this should play pretty Capture smooth. And, and even if I change frame rate resolution down. It took up a I lot get of, uh, better performance, but still not great. So this seemed to me like a big flaw in Caden Live, and I was like, I can't, I don't understand why this is like this. Then I found what was going on, and many of you may have known this already, but let me just show you uh, what fixed it. So again, Project let's review. So I was getting folder and that's it. 10 frames per second, 12 frames per, per second here on this clip shoots. with nothing going on. Now if I go over here to the far left of the toolbar above the timeline, there's a, a, a checkbox ne next to the words enable track compositing. If I turn that off and go back to my timeline and try this again, now watch the frame rate when I hit play. And so on and so forth. So I've gathered a lot of folders, a lot of photos. And Just like that, now it's playing my clip at full speed, 29.97 frames per second. Now. I do have OBS running, so it is slowing down my system right now, so it's actually affecting my playback. But you can see the difference when Multiple I toggle that, I don't, I don't do a lot enable of track compositing, involves my playback gets choppy instantly. Explosions. And I turn it off and give Players it a second to catch up. Um, We're back to 29.97, and you can see that over here. That seems like a very simple fix, and it is, and but it's a game changer for me because now it has given me a lot more confidence in Caden Live, given me a lot more confidence in my little $250 PC that I've been using um, for this channel. I know what the capabilities are. 
I know that to a certain extent, this PC, this software can edit 4K. Uh, my, my flavor of 4K currently is UHD 4K, H.264, only 8-bit, but that's fine. So enable toggle the enable track compositing option and see if you can get away with having that option off for most of your for, for your edit and see what uh, and see what performance boost you get now the only the only uh, actual little gotcha that you'll see when you have that turned off is that when you add that I've found so far is when you add titles the titles when you add titles and you add crop effects, I think that they won't show through to the next layer. That It'll that compositing layers. element of it won't it work. That's what you're turning off, basically. Label. And but if you have an edit where you're building your cut, all your video layers, even most some motion graphics and whatnot, if you're if you're building the cut, you want to be able to move as fast you, as you can, and turning that off will help you do that. Okay, let's talk about number two. If you've done that and you're still not getting uh, the performance you want or you want a little more boost then the next thing is what I've already played around with already you saw me play around with is the uh, preview resolution which you have preview re resolution for the clip monitor playback and you have preview preview resolution options for the project monitor playback and you can see it here you have playback at one to one which is playing back the clip at the native resolution that it is you have 720p, 540p, 360p, and 270p. For the most part, when I when I toggle this, the first three op top options are the only ones I really I really need. So I can go one to one sometimes, uh, 720 or 540. And if I go down to 540, air cable as well. So that's that's the cool thing. It definitely helps and out. It definitely helps out my uh, my playback. Like I said, one. I'm running OBS in the background, so my playback isn't perfect. When OBS is running, of, uh, just turning that, that track positing option and off and doing and, this uh, gives me a lot of flexibility. It makes my edit pretty smooth. So those two things right off the bat, track, track compositing option, toggle that on and off, see what your performance boost is. Lower your preview resolution, especially if you're editing in a small window like this. 540p or 720p is most likely all you need to work with at first. At some point, you may want to go one-to-one -to, -one to check all the details and whatnot. But lowering the preview resolution is a, a really nice option to have, and it's something you definitely need to play around with. Number three is creating proxies and editing with proxies. So let's go to my bin here and look at the, the clips I was showing you earlier. Now, as of right now, all these clips in the bin and in my timeline are as they were shot. They're the files straight from camera. Now, I did, before I did started this video, I did create proxies for these. Now, whether they're created or not created, what you can do to create proxies is you can highlight the clips you want, you right-click, and then clip, you turn on this proxy clip. So if, the, if there's proxies created, which there are for my clips, it will basically exchange out the, the, the original clips with proxies so you can work. And then when you're done, you right click on it, uncheck the proxy uh, checkbox. So it'll, ta it'll take a second and then it'll turn off the proxies and relink to the original uh, files. I'm gonna turn my proxies back on And then I'll show you the performance boost I get from proxies. So now, even with OBS running in the background, layering multiple, I can scrub through this footage. Look how you can see how quickly I can scrub through this footage. Which even even before even before even before when I had the enable track compositing turned off, the scrubbing wasn't quite this smooth. But I can scrub through the footage and see every every single frame. Um, I can also scrub through them in the clip monitor a lot quicker. Like I said, it's easy to toggle the proxies on and off. You can do that in the in the bin for each clip, or you can do it for a whole bunch of clips if you just highlight them and right click. The biggest challenge with proxies is, is deciding which proxy setting to use. Caden Live has a handful of presets that you can use, but since Caden Live relies on FFmpeg. You can use anything that FFmpeg can create. You can use 
in Caden Live. So you can create your own presets, and that's what I did. So if I go to Project Settings, go to the Proxy tab, this is a place here where I can choose the profile for the proxies that you want to create. The one, that one that's highlighted right now is the one that I created, one of the ones that I created. But there are a lot of presets here that you can play around with. Some are hardware accelerated, so if you have an NVIDIA card, you can choose one appropriately. If you have an Intel CPU with a quick sync, you can choose one of those presets accordingly. Or if you just have an AMD only processor like I do with no, G with no discrete GPU, you can cho choose accordingly as well. I tried ProRes, and I think I tried some of the other ones. H.264 can work for, for some systems, but for me, I'm, my RAWs are already H.264. I, I wanted an intra frame codec for my proxies, even if the resolution was small like you expect proxies to be. So I created one with a DNX, an Avid DNX LB profile at 960 by 540 resolution. And I'll, I can put the if you guys are if you guys are curious either in the description or on the Patreon I'll put the uh, I'll put this preset so you guys can copy it in there or just type it in there for yourselves. But basically these are FFmpeg settings that you type in here, and Caden Live uses FFmpeg to make these proxies. So that's what I already did before I recorded this video, and that's what all these proxies are. Now if I go full screen with any of these, you'll see disclosures or doing they're advanced um, not perfect but that's the whole point proxies are small or or lower resolution so your itself. system can handle them uh, easily and then when I'm done with my edit and everything's smooth and everything's uh, laid out how I want it to be and I've, I've watched it a few times and I'll turn the proxies off and render the the final output from there I want a fluid and responsive editing system that's pretty much a must for me. If if I couldn't get that with Caden Live at all, I would stick with Lightworks until I could get Resolve on my system, or or try one of the other editing systems for for Linux. But understanding Caden Live more and more, I know how I can tweak things and make it work to how I want it to work. So I'm really ex I was really excited about that track compositing feature that I found because I was scratching my head on why Caden Live was not able to play the simplest of clip with nothing else in the timeline without dropping frames. And I thought, well, maybe my system was too slow, but that wasn't the case. My system is a little more capable than I gave it, gave it credit for. So definitely try th these three tips, track compositing, toggling on and off, lower the preview resolution, and create and edit with proxies. Now, if your system works well for you as is, obviously you may not need any of this, but it's still worth a shot to experiment with these things because this may give you a little more headroom to work with different tracks, graphics, motion graphics, and whatnot to, to build a more complex edit without having to render the whole thing to, to, to get, a, to get a, a, a live preview. So that's it for now, guys. I know this, this video went way longer than I expected it to be. But let me know what other questions you have about Caden Live. I'm still diving deep into it and learning all about it, learning all about FFmpeg, because learning F FFmpeg in turn is learning a crucial part of Caden Live. So let me know what other questions you guys have. We will continue this conversation on Patreon as well as in the comments here. I appreciate every one of you guys as always. If you haven't joined the Patreon yet, I invite you to do so. I have spaces for uh, credits at the end of videos. So take advantage of those. Take advantage of any other of the other tiers and give me feedback here and on Patreon. And I'll talk to you guys soon.